know that you're a phoenix, so rise up from all those ashes today. Yeah, you were scarred, but you were sorry. You can call it to the grave. I know you know that a lion's inside, sleeping in your heart. Step back and remember who you what up, Pride? It's your boy Mari back again with another reaction video. Today, we're getting into yet another part of Hamilton. I am very excited. This video is, is going to be long. It comprises quite a few songs. Not that I haven't done this amount of songs in a part before, but as we go on more and more, I just have more and more to talk about with the songs as the motifs develop and the plot develops, whatever. So I'm not going to make this intro too long. If you're new here, go watch like any of the previous, I think, 11 parts before we got to this you'll get the whole rundown of how my brain works and what we're doing here uh thank you so much for being here if you haven't subscribed please do i'm gonna be reacting to a lot more hamilton content i didn't know there was like so much auxiliary extra content with hamilton outside of the musical itself so i'm gonna be reacting to a lot of that stuff i'm gonna be reacting to other musicals and stuff as well so hit the subscribe button not to miss any of that but without further ado let's get into this and i'll see all you guys on the other side War hero Philip Schuyler loses Senate seat to young upstart Aaron Burr. Grandpa just lost his seat in the Senate. Sometimes that's how it goes. Well, Daddy's gonna find out any minute. I'm sure he already knows. Further down, further, further down, down, let's meet the newest senator from New York. New York. Our senator. Burr, since when are you a Democrat? Okay, uh, this man wasted no time. Okay, okay. So to start things off, obviously, like several back-to-back -back references to Skylar Sisters, which was the last time that we got mentions of Philip Skylar, whose actor apparently came back as the most evil man in history. Not the most evil man, but for dramatic effect, the most evil man in history, Mr. Reynolds. So, uh, yeah, that's the last time Philip Skylar came up, which was the Skylar Sisters. And we got that like same intro, the little drum fill into like the little, I don't know what that is, but it's like some type of sound effect, right? And then I think we actually got the same bass line as well. That is correct. But we definitely got the same top line vocal melody. You get the point. It was the Skylar Sisters before, but in that song, we got introduced to Philip Skylar, their dad. And in this song, we are now seeing Philip Schuyler apparently lose his Senate spot. I didn't even know he was a senator at all. So that's news to me, but he lost to Burr. So um, yeah, this man wasted no time in, in actualizing his ambition. So my theory on the last song is immediately being developed upon, which is cool. Oh, Burr? Since when are you a Democratic Republican? Since being one put me on the up and up again. No one knows who you are or what you do. They don't need to know me, they don't like you. Excuse me? Oh, Wall Damn. Street thinks you're great. You'll always be adored by the things you create. This galaxy was up for grabs, so I took it. I've always considered you a friend. I don't see why that has to end. You change No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't even hear him say it yet. I was, I was about to say the same thing. No, no. Okay, no. I don't like it. I'm not gonna lie, I don't feel like it had to go down like this. One thing before I get into like my little rant, hold on, let me, this dude right here, this, <laughs> my guy in white in the back, I keep catching him making like great faces. He ain't said nothing so far, I think, I hope, cause I said the same thing with Reynolds, he turned out to be like a character previously, but I think this guy hasn't said anything so far, but his facial acting, his, his miming, I guess, I don't know, has been great. Cause like there have been several moments where like he just, his facial expressions been hitting. But anyway, yeah, I don't, why did Burr's actualization of his ambition have to result in taking the Senate position of his friend's father-in-law? I get that Burr would be several degrees removed from Philip Schuyler because he's your friend's wife's dad. Do you get what I'm saying? But still, it just, it, it feels weird. And also like him just blatantly being like, I just switched parties just for upward mobility. People still do that, like at actually a lot. It's, it's still very common, but it's, it's weird to think about this early into the bipartisan situation that we have in this country, that happening. 
and like Burr being so blatant about it. I know he's not like making a press conference saying that he's talking to his friend, but still like being so blatant about, I don't really care about any of the policies. I just want to move up the political ladder and I could do that easier in the other party. I've always considered you a friend. I don't see why that has to end. You changed parties to run against my father-in-law. I changed parties to seize the opportunity I saw. I swear your pride will be the death of us all. Beware, it goes before the fall. The issue on the table. France is on the verge of war with England. Now do we commit money? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Too fast of a transition into a different scene. I, I need a second. Pride goes before fall. That, for those of you who don't know, is a scripture from Proverbs. Uh, it's written by King Solomon, who is said to be the wisest man who ever lived. So it's, generally speaking, great advice. I also just really like Solomon. Like, he's like one of my favorite people in the Bible. So like, I, I really, I agree with a lot of stuff that he says. And I particularly agree with this scripture, which my mom has beaten into my head since I was a child. Every single time we've ever seen someone get arrogant, she will just quote this scripture. But I... It, it feels weird in this context. It's a weird use. I get what Burr is like trying to say, but I don't think Hamilton is being prideful in this moment. I think Hamilton is hurt because he's like, dude, you're supposed to be my friend and you just took the job of my dad. I don't think that has anything to do with arrogance in particular. In fact, it might be a little bit of a pot meat kettle situation because like it's Burr's ambition that is pushing him to make this move, which ambition and arrogance are not the same thing, but ambition can often lead to arrogance. Does that, does that make sense? I don't know, it just feels weird. It was a weird time to use the quote, but um, I get his intention. It looks like we're about to have another type of situation here. That they that was so, George Washington like literally teleported in like Nightcrawler. <laughs> Yo, it's your boy, Editor Amari here. And one, yes, every single second of that X-Men cutaway was absolutely necessary. And two, you're welcome. Way too fast, so I'm gonna go back see how this progresses and then uh, we'll proceed forward. It goes before the fall. The issue on the table. France is on the verge of war with England. Now do we commit money and aid to our French allies or do we stay out of it? Remember, my decision on this matter is not subject to congressional approval. The only one you have to convince is me. When we were on death's door, when we were needy, we made a promise, we signed a treaty. We needed money and guns and half a chance. Uh, who provided those funds? France. In return, they didn't ask for land. Only a promise that we'd lend a hand and stand with them if they fought against oppressors. And revolution is messy, but now is the time to stand. Stand with our brothers as they fight against tyranny. I know that Alexander Hamilton is here and he would rather not have this debate. I remind you that he is not Secretary of State. He knows nothing of loyalty. Smells like new money, dresses like fake royalty. Desperate to rise above his station. Everything he does betrays the ideals of our nation. Hey, and if you don't know, now you know, Mr. President. Thank you, Secretary Jefferson. Okay, so first things first, Biggie reference. Okay, all of you 90s hip hop fans who are gonna yell at me for, for missing that, I got it, okay, okay. Uh, I agree, I, I hate it, cause I don't, I don't want to agree with Thomas Jefferson, but I totally agree. And the fact that this is a battle tells me that Hamilton is about to not agree. And so before I have to get on Hamilton's head, I just want to say, I don't like Thomas Jefferson as a person. <laughs> like I, I love his character. I'm not going to lie. Diggs is, is amazing. He's definitely a top three performer in this entire like musical for me. I just, I love him. But um, I, I agree. I, I agree so strongly with this. I'm going to wait before I give my thoughts on like the whole matter of this until Hamilton goes, but I just, I just want to say that before Hamilton speaks, I agree. Now, if he's going to sway me, we are about to see, but I, I agree with Thomas Jefferson as much as that pains me. Okay. I can dislike you and still say, Hey, you're right. Secretary Hamilton, your response. You must 
must be out of your goddamn mind if you think the president is gonna bring the nation to the brink of meddling in the middle of a military mess, a game of chess where France is queen and kingless. We saw. I lied. I lied. I'm not waiting until the end, bruh, bruh. Why? Why? He came out with so much passion on this position. I. I, I was shook it. And then he goes right into the M alliteration of uh, it was a military. Me it's something. Right, we're going back. OK, I'm going I'm to see it. I'm going to see it. Meddling in the middle of a military mess. That's hard. <laughs> That's how I like it. Come on now. The quadruple M alliteration in the same lot. You got to you got to put some respect on my guy's name. He's a whore. OK, but. He's a whore who can rap. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Most great rappers are not fateful people. That that that's not a good trend. Whatever. The point is that that's hard. And then the, the next line about chess. Hold on. 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 A game of chess when France is queen and kingless. I like it. I like it. Like so chess less. You, you see how it's, it's, I I like it. That's what I'm saying. Hamilton came out with. The, too much passion on this particular issue. He's more passionate about this than like his actual country's governing of the finances and stuff that they rapped about before. But um, he's flowing. He flowed like I'm, Thomas Jefferson. While I agree with his point, like he's getting eaten up in these rap battles, boy. Woo! He better put his big boy pants on. Where France is queen and kingless, we signed a treaty with the king whose head is now in a basket. Would you like to take it out and ask it? <laughs> Should we honor our treaty, King Louis' head? Oh, do whatever you want. I'm super dead. Enough. Enough. Hamilton is right. Mr. President. No, 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 he's not. No. Stop it. Stop it right now, George. Well, this clearly is not going to go in my favor. I actually asked about this last time we saw Lafayette, I think, when as he was going away. When Hamilton, you liar, okay, you, you said he was going to have their back, and you lied. But, okay, okay, hear me out. The way in which I am wired, if it has not been clear throughout this whole process, is that the cloth I'm cut from is dyed in the tide of ride or die. Oh! And so I am loyal to a fault. Like, I, if you have my back, I will have your back for as long as you are deserving of somebody having your back. And so I feel very strongly that the U.S. in this situation should come to the defense of France. I get that it, at least from the perspective of Hamilton, it may not be the most strategically wise decision, but I still feel like it is the right decision, especially given your history with France and who they're currently fighting with. I can even argue that it is a strategically wise decision to back your first and maybe only actual ally, the first and maybe only country that actually recognizes you as your own sovereign entity and not just a rebellious set of colonies and keeping and cementing your alliance with this nation or, or people is not only beneficial to them, but it's also beneficial to you because having strong allies makes you stronger. Yes, what Hamilton said about the king being dead is true. They did chop his head off and that was who you signed the treaties with. I get it, but it wasn't the king who was in the trenches bleeding and fighting with you for your freedom and your power that you are now choosing to exercise or not exercise. It was the French people. And so that's who you would be going to fight with. That's who you would be going to back and furthermore the French people the collective that is the people that make up the the French territories are militaristic monsters and they have shown that time and time again throughout history and so I do not think it is the strategically wise position to not back them when they're down because eventually they won't be down and when they're up again, you don't want to be on the wrong side of them because you didn't back them when they needed you. And they backed you when you, like, does that make sense? Just because it was the king who made that decision doesn't mean that the French people forgot that they backed you during your independence movement. You get what I'm saying? And so I think that both from a, I don't want to say morally superior, but a, a moral principle that I'm aligned with perspective, as well as from a strategic perspective, I feel like backing them is important. And while, yes, you could be dragged into another war with England and you, you just got out of one by the skin of your teeth, but 
that was only because of the people who you are going to back. And furthermore, England to attack you guys again would have to be fighting not just on multiple coasts, but on multiple continents. And as we already know, divide and conquer, when you split your forces, you are that much easier to beat. The combination of the French people, because again, it wasn't King Louis who was out there stealing cannons, and the American slash, you know, colonists have shown the necessary military might to be able to take on the British. And so it's less of an unknown, not to say that just because you beat somebody once, you will continue to forever beat them but you get what i'm saying it's not like you're fighting the russian empire which you have no idea how that would go you've gone through this process before with these same quote-unquote teams and been victorious before so i feel like all of this tentative nature that is causing them to in my opinion turn their back on a friend which is like clearly a, a running theme of this part given the last song i don't like it <laughs> as i just wouldn't yeah, even though we sometimes disagree on things, the US and France are allies now, and that's a very important alliance, and that is in large part because we back them when they needed it. Like, do you, do you see what I'm saying? Like, the US has a tendency to meddle in other countries' affairs, and most of them don't like it. But in this particular situation where an ally is being attacked, I feel very strongly that if you have the ability to help and you don't, you are now in the wrong. But that's just me. I, I'm sure some people will disagree. Uh, man, I got a bunch of unintentional rhymes in this video. Oh, do whatever you want. I'm super dead. Enough. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> Hamilton is right. Mr. President. We're too fragile to start another fight. Sir, do we not fight for freedom? Sure, when the French figure out who's going to lead them. The people are leading. The people are rioting. There's a difference. Frankly, it's a little disquieting. You would let your ideals blind you to reality. Hamilton, sir, draft a statement of neutrality. Yes, sir. No. Did you forget Lafayette? What? Have you an ounce of regret? Lafayette's a smart man. He'll be fine. And before he was your friend, he... No, boo, boo, shut up, sh sh no, stop, no, ah, okay, all right, I didn't, <sighs> okay, the Lafayette thing was a low blow, but like, it's very true, and yes, this, this on screen, it says, before he was your friend, he was mine, correct, and you're leaving him out to dry, just because he's a smart man does not mean that you shouldn't help him, in fact, because he's a smart man, you should have more confidence that helping him will go on to be beneficial for both him and you, that he will be able to make the most of your help. But Washington was like, basically because they don't have a leader, we're not going to help them. But if France had used that same argument against you guys, you guys would all be dead. Every single one of you, all of you, not just colonists, y'all specifically would be dead because the British would have round y'all up and shot you. Do you see what I'm saying? Like all of the arguments from the position of the characters whose team I'm supposed to be on, but hey, I gotta call a spade a spade, bro. If I call it how I see it. All of the positions that Alex and Washington are making to stay out of it and stay neutral, I mean, at least they aren't backing the British, that would be even worse, but to stay neutral, all could have been used against the colonists by the French. Lafayette could have said, oh, Alex is smart. He'll take care of himself. And y'all would have been dead. Louis could have said, oh, we'll help them when they figure out who's going to lead them. And y'all would have been dead. Oh, they're rioting. Y yeah. So were y'all. Like, this, I, this, it's, I, it's a lot of, it just feels very hypocritical to be like, we were getting the snot kicked out of us by the bully on the playground. You came and helped us. We bandaged ourselves up. We're healing and we're getting stronger now. And now that bully is kicking the snot out of you. And we're looking around the corner like, but that ain't my business though. Do you see what I'm saying? That's so trash. You're so trash. I don't like it. Ah, uh, this bothers me. I hope that this is not how this actually played out in history. And there was a little bit more context or something i don't know i yeah and like right after this napoleon took over right this is like right prior to like the napoleonic era of france and france was monstrous do you see what i'm saying um, imagine imagine how how useful of an ally that that you whatever 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 it bothers me okay on a personal level on a strategic level on an everything level i don't understand it and i'm sure somebody has already typed a book on why their position is the correct position. Obviously, it all worked out. Eventually, we got back on friendly terms with France. France figured out like who was gonna lead them, so on and so forth. And we didn't, I don't think, didn't get drawn back into another. I know at some point we end up fighting the British again. I don't know how that happened, but at least in this situation, we didn't get drawn 
back into another war with the British. So it's like, okay, cool. But, um, yeah. Lafayette's a smart man. He'll be fine. And before he was your friend, he was mine. If we try to fight in every revolution in the world, we never stop. Where do we draw the line? We don't. For 250 years, we continue to meddle in everybody's affairs, whether they like it or not, with the exception of like a few isolationist periods. And um, it makes us the most powerful nation the world has ever seen. D do you see what I'm saying? Like, okay, I'm not gonna make this like a political debate, but whatever your stance is on Pax Americana, one thing that you cannot deny is that the US is the most powerful country on earth. And that, that came in large part due to our meddling and our alliances. And this stance is stepping away from that. We never stop, where do we draw the line? Your descendants would go on to like blow past that line so many times and made unfathomable amounts of money, created the strongest military alliance the world has ever seen. It worked out, it worked out. I'm not arguing that we should always meddle in everybody's affairs. I'm not arguing that it is right. I'm not arguing that it's wrong. I'm just I'm just saying that when you look at the results of the situation, and I know that hindsight's 2020, they couldn't see where this would eventually lead. But again, even using the, the same argument that I used from before, when your ally is down and you strengthen them, it also strengthens, it's not even an altruistic point. It is like just blatant strategy. So I'm not asking them to meddle in everybody's affairs, to overthrow every single regime that doesn't profit them the most. I'm simply saying in this particular situation, I feel like it's a very clear beneficial decision. And I'm, I'm only saying this not because I think they can hear me or that we can go back in the past and change it, but because there are enough of you in the comments who like to debate with me back and forth on like these different topics. And so I really, before we get into a debate in the comment section, I want you guys to understand my position on this. I'm strictly talking about this particular instance. So quick-witted. Alas, I admit it. I bet you were quite a lawyer. My defendants got acquitted. Yeah. Well, someone ought to remind you. What? You're nothing without Washington behind you. Hamilton. Daddy's calling. Damn. Okay, I don't want to stop again, but I, I have to say, I've, I've kind of been railing on Hamilton for the past however long this has been. But uh, no, TJ, I'm off your team already again. You didn't said too much. It's, I disagree entirely. I get that the whole daddy point is not literal, but the premise that Hamilton is nothing without Washington, that he is only where he is because of his connections is wild coming from Thomas Jefferson. Like in that congressional setting, Hamilton is probably the person who is the least apt to say that against because unlike the rest of them, he wasn't born into money. He wasn't born into a title. He wasn't born into lots of land that he inherited. He is where he is because of the man who he is. And while he is attached to names that have prestige now, Schuyler, Washington, so on and so forth, and even Hamilton, he is building prestige for his own name. But those, those people who he is attached to chose him because of the man who he is not the man who his father is. It's wild to say that. Like, I, I get you're salty because you just lost your second cabinet battle in a row. But at the same time, like, that's, that's not even just ad hominem. That's just blatantly wrong, especially coming from the uber wealthy slave owner. Like, anyway, let's get into this other thing that sounds like, I don't know, Nintendo pets or something. I don't know what that lead melody is, but it sounded interesting. It must be nice, it must be nice to have Washington on your side. It must be nice, it must be nice to have Washington on your side. Every action has its equal opposite reaction. Thanks to Hamilton, our cabinet's fractured into factions. Try not to crack under the stress. We're breaking down like fractions. We smack each other in the press and we don't print retractions. I get no satisfaction witnessing his fits of passion. The way he primps and preens and dresses like the pit of fashion. Our poorest citizens. Are um, okay. Bars. <laughs> like, um, look, look at birds freaking slithering in like a little sn anyway we're we'll we'll get to you that's not why i paused i like the intelligence that is displayed in this beginning part he references math with the uh fractions did he say factions or fractions i think he says we're 
breaking down like fractions. So math and then also physics. He references um, Newton's third law in the uh, equal and opposite reactions, right? And obviously you have to be a supreme genius of the highest order, a lyrical mastermind to incorporate physics into your rapping, right? Right? See where this is going. I have done the same. I have literally referenced physics in my own songs, most notably in a song called It Is Time, where I reference Ween's Law, which is another law of physics. If you don't know what that is, that's okay. Give it a play anyway and see if it makes your day. Oh! Like, come on now. That was hard. I, I literally, that was developing as I was saying, hey, whatever. It doesn't matter. The point is, that's bars. And uh, you should check that song out. Shameless plug aside, I really like the fact that, like, every once in a while, Thomas Jefferson will just remind you that, oh, yeah, this dude is really smart. And he is, like, embedding all of this additional outside sources, like, stem stuff. The metaphors that he is using for the tensions in their congressional hearings is super interesting to me. And I, I just think it's another reminder that even though he is getting like just molly whopped by Alex at every opportunity, this man is just sunning him. He is also really, really smart. And so I, I think that this is like a really cool reminder right after that massive hot L that Lamis Lefferson just took. Our poorest citizens, our farmers, live ration to ration as Wall Street robs them blind in search of chips to cash in. This prick is asking for someone to bring him to task. Somebody give me some dirt on this vacuous mask so we can at last unmask him. I'll pull the trigger on him. Someone load the gun and cock it. While we were all watching, he got Washington in his pocket. It must be nice. Okay, 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 uh, that's why, that's wild, that's a lot of shun rhymes in a row, fashion, fraction, f faction, uh, d distraction, I think he said in there, I, d I don't know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of shuns in there, speaking of fashion, why he always talking about fashion, he was talking about fashion in the last song too, what's up with you, you, you can't be dressing like that, criticizing other people's fashion, but whatever, that was a lot of shun rhymes in a row, and then he switched the uh, rhyme scheme to something else that I'm now forgetting why. I'm trying to talk about it. Brain, help me. But it was really interesting that like he immediately went to like, somebody give me the, uh, the gun, I'll cock and load it or something. I don't know, whatever. The point is he was using a gun metaphor, which is obviously heavy foreshadowing because he is, he's literally talking to the man that goes on to not metaphorically shoot Alexander Hamilton. I told you he was an op. I said it. I said it. And look, look, look at this. Look at this oppositionary behavior right here. He is blatantly cozying up to like the the person who hates Hamilton most, and he's supposed to be his friends. Why can't we still be for it? Like this is why. Because you're slimy. Don't like it. It must be nice to have Washington on your side. It must be nice. It must be nice. To have Washington on your side Look back at the Bill of Rights Which I wrote <laughs> The ink hasn't dried It must be nice It must be nice To have Washington on your side So he's doubled the size of the government Wasn't the trouble with much of our previous government size Look in his eyes See how he lies Ooh. All of the center of his enterprise Centralizing national credit Nah, nah Nah, 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 this is, this is a crazy song. This is, this is, no, hold on. I don't know what it is he said. I'm gonna go back in a second. I think it was a uh, 16th note triplet flow that if you don't know what that means, it doesn't matter. The point is that when Madison came in, he just, he, he just amped it even further. Like this, this is crazy, which this song is interesting because it's like, as they're talking, the, the flow is progressively getting more and more complex in their rapping. But this part right here, hold on. So he's doubled the size of the government. Wasn't the trouble with much of our previous government size. Look in his eyes. See how he lies. Follow the scent of his enterprise. Crazy. <laughs> oh, that's cold. Oh, I like that. Oh, man. So he doubled the size of the government. Wasn't the problem? Yeah, I like that. I like... <laughs> 
<laughs> That's cool. Look in his eyes. See all he lies. Look at his enterprise. Uh, it's cool. I, I just, I, I do. I like it. This song is not musically a song that you would think would have this technical of a rap flow over it, but but it does. And it's, it's so interesting, especially because like it's just growing in intensity, kind of in the same way that Burr grows in intensity in the crescendo moment of his actualization of ambition, which happened in the last part. This is doing something similar, but like it's not melodic, it's rapping. And, and instead of growing in the passionate nature of your ambition, this is growing in the technical nature of their dismantling of Hamilton, which I find very, very interesting. Again, because Burr is here and all of this is really revolving around Alexander Hamilton. This song started with like such a little a cute little like keyboard melody that I, I wasn't expecting all of this at all. And so I'm just, I'm just kind of blown away. There's so many rhymes in this. Like even, even with the song starting on the like action, reaction, fashion, cashin, fraction, faction, uh, ration. Like, do like, you see what I'm saying? There's so many shun rhymes just in that initial part that like every time they, they switch the rhyme, we get like 20 other things that rhyme. It's not an A, A, B, B, or A, B, A, B. It's like an A, A, B, 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 B. If you don't know what I'm talking about, again, go back to one of the previous parts where I went and did a semi explanation of rhyme scheme patterns. Or if you don't want to do that, just look up rhyme scheme patterns and, and you'll get what I'm saying. But like the, the amount of things that they are stacking in their rhymes is like, it's, it's, it's a lot. Anyway, let's, let's get back into it. Centralizing national credit and making American credit competitive. If we don't stop it, we ain't in a better time. I have to resign. Somebody has to stand up for the South. Or somebody has to stand up to his mouth. If there's a fire you're trying to douse, you can't put it out from inside the house. I'm in the cabinet. I am complicit in watching him grabbing at power and kissing him. Washington isn't gonna listen to discipline dissidents. This is the difference. This kid is out. Nigga, bruh, bruh. I like that they cut the music for that part so you can like really feel like, oh, oh, I'm supposed to be paying attention to what he's saying here. I'm not supposed to be bopping along to like the musical aspects of this. Like he, he really, that was like an eight part alliteration on the D. It was like this, hold on. This, dissidents, uh, yes, this is a, I'll, I'll show it to you in a second, but this is a part of the alliteration itself. Watching him grabbing at power and kissing if Washington isn't gonna listen to discipline dissidents, this is the difference, this kid is- If Washington isn't gonna listen to discipline dissidents, this is the, hold on. Washington isn't gonna listen to discipline dissidents, uh, move, box, this is the difference, this kid is out is crazy. How many is that? Hold on, one second. Discipline dissidents, dis- which this, you can pronounce with a D sound like Diggs does here. Oh, it's a lot of D, wow. Uh, pause, <laughs> whoa. Uh, discipline, dissidence, dis, difference, and dis again. I counted five um, D sound alliteration moments in that single line. That's crazy. That's cra That's like half the words in the sentence fit into the literate. That's, that's, that's wild. That's wild. Lynn was in his bag. Really when he was writing all of this, but like everybody's like, oh, he gave all of the best songs to Burr. Not lyrically though. <laughs> the lyrical aspects of the rapping in this musical between the parts that are Lafayette slash Thomas, the parts that were obviously saved for Hamilton himself. Even some of the stuff that they give to like George Washington when he's like first introduced uh, in uh, Right Hand Man. Like that's just, it's, it's, dog. it's fire, it's fire. And the cool thing about this is it's like really impressive without being annoying. I don't, it doesn't bother me. Maybe it bothers you guys. Some people actually really don't like alliteration. I don't know, I don't get it. I very much love alliteration and I work it into like my own speech patterns. So this like really scratches my personal creative itch as a songwriter. But if you're one of the people who don't like heavy uses of alliteration in songwriting, well, you're wrong. You suck, your taste is trash, you're not a good person. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, guys. Everybody has their own opinions, but personally, I think this is really impressive.
for the seeds of Hamilton's misdeeds. It must be nice. It must be nice. You follow the money and see where it goes. It must be nice. It must be nice. The emperor has no clothes. We won't be invisible. One, this is obviously foreshadowing them, I guess, stumbling upon Hamilton's like paying off of of the the side piece situation because they said follow the money see where it leads get in the weeds see the seeds of his misdeeds that's that's bars too my god but uh the emperor's no clothes thing that that's clearly a reference to uh the emperor's new clothes which is a phrase that i know because there's a panic at the disco song by, <laughs> by that name but i i don't know what the emperor's new clothes means i know that it predates the panic at the disco song but i i just don't i just I just vibe to Brandon Yuri singing. I don't like, you know, <laughs> so I don't, I don't know what that means. So if you know what the emperor's new clothes means, please let me know in the comments and then tell me how that relates to emperor's no clothes. Just explain that part there because like this song lyrically is, it's even above my prey grade. Okay. And so I, I want to be in the know and you guys are like really passionate about teaching me things. So te teach me this, please. I, I want to know what that means and what all of like, you know? Oh, interesting. Because every second it grows, and then the next line they talk about seeds, weeds, you see this plant connection there in the uh, metaphorical imagery. But you get what I'm saying? There's a connection of like plant references, if you're looking for it, in those set of lines there. We won't be denied, still, it must be nice, <laughs> it must be nice, to have Washington on your side. Mr. President, you asked to see me. I know you're busy. What do you need, sir? Sir? I want to give you a word of warning. Sir, I don't know what you heard, but whatever it is, Jefferson started it. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson resigned this morning. You're kidding. Dub. I need a favor. Whatever you say, sir, Jefferson will pay for his behavior. Talk less. I'll use the press. I'll write under a pseudonym. You'll see what I can do to him. I... Okay, so I, I was waiting to see if it was... if it was. Shut up. My ear's itchy. <laughs> I was waiting to see if it was developed, but they just brought in another one. So multiple motifs there. Let me start with the one I'm less likely to remember at the end of this talk less obviously he's been told that a lot recently uh, or that fish has been brought up a lot recently dating all the way back to aaron burser i don't have to tell you what songs recently brought it up because we, we it was just a whole thing i think this is the first time someone other than alex or burr has said it but yeah there's the motif there and then there is the uh i forgot oh you said it but the, the there's the right hand man motif of the da 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 um, Here comes the general, the pride of Mount Vernon! You know, that part of Right Hand Man when Washington is first introduced. So uh, we, have, we have that melodically happening. And then there's like another vocal part over here. And then right here, we have the uh, Mr. President, You Asked to See Me, which is like similar to when uh, Washington first meets Alex in... That's also right hand man. That's the whole point of the song. Um, where he says, Your Excellency, sir, you asked to see me or you wish to see me or something like, some, something like that. The point is that that's also another reference to a whole different part of right hand man. I don't know if that same dun, 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 is playing at that part during right hand man. I don't, I don't think it is. But the point is, this is, there's multiple references to right hand man that are happening here to start off the song. Jefferson started it. <laughs> so funny. Thomas Jefferson resigned this morning. You're kidding. Dub. Talk less. I'll use the press. I'll write under a pseudonym. You'll see what I can do to him. I need you to draft an address. Yes, he resigned. You can finally speak your mind. No. He's stepping down so he can run for president. <laughs> Good luck defeating you, sir. I'm stepping down. I'm not running for president. I'm sorry, what? One last time, relax, have a drink with me. One last time, let's 
Let's take a break tonight And then we'll teach them how to say goodbye To say goodbye You and I To talk about neutrality, sir. With Britain and France on the verge of war, is this the best I time? I want to warn against partisan fighting. Pick up a pen, start writing. I want to talk about what I have learned, the hard-won wisdom I have earned. Sorry, I got, I, I wasn't, I, I was jamming. <laughs> I forgot I was supposed to be doing my job. Um, I was not expecting us to get all the way to the resignation of Washington in this. He could have very easily become a tyrant, you know? Like, so, so many military dictatorships exist and have existed throughout history. Like, this, this man could have been Caesar, you get me? But why was that the first military dictatorship that I went to? Because it's Caesar, that's why. Roman Empire, very important. They weren't an empire yet till after Caesar, but that's not the point, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, it speaks a lot to who he was as a man to basically give up ultimate power. Like they say, absolute power corrupts absolutely, but he didn't let it change him. He didn't want the power like burr <laughs> um and so he stepped away which is really cool and him using this as a teaching moment to basically be like you guys are at each other's throats so much that thomas jefferson is resigning so he can run against me and i'm just going to like bow out gracefully is really really cool i, I think that that's super dope uh not at all what i would have done i'm not gonna lie i'm not a good person apparently because i would have buried him not literally although in this context people were getting buried literally all types of duels and stuff but yeah nah he was nah nah not not your boy amari okay uh but i think this shows the fiber of the man that he is and also the fact that me and alex are like what but um I'm honest, though. At least I can be honest with you. I could have just lied and, like, you know, tried to virtue signal and been like, oh, yes, I see that what he's doing is the right thing, so I totally would have done it. Nope, nope, not me. Not because I feel like just because you have gotten to a seat of power, you inherently deserve it, but I do feel like Washington deserved it. Part of that is because he was the kind of man who would resign from power even though he didn't have to like he didn't resign as far as i can tell because of some scandal it's not like he got caught cheating or something and so he was like oh, let me just bow out to save face or because they're they're like forcing me to but he just opted to be like hey this is not a monarchy and so i think that that's that's super dope you know i don't know what like his favorability score was during this time like how much of the population was in favor of him i don't even know if they had those back then but i have to assume that with how recent this was in relation to him leading us into independence he would have still been really popular especially because as far as i know he didn't really have any big political missteps or mishaps now again that's as far as i know there might have been some stuff that i don't know about but i just think that this is really cool is what i'm saying it's it's astounding to me because i know so so many people in his position that would not have done it i mean napoleon Literally, I just mentioned him earlier. Napoleon was like, um, he mentions, I, I'm now forgetting the quote. Why did you bring it up if you're not going to remember the quote? It's something to the effect of like when they tried to get him to step down. Because like he, he did what I said that Washington could have done, which is basically he threw the military, took over the country, and then became king, then emperor, and then, you know, so on and so forth. And he was like, they're trying to make me Washington when they tried to like force him out. They like push him into exile or whatever i see i told you i do know some history i just i only know the interesting parts uh so yeah and napoleon is absolutely one of the interesting parts but the point is that a lot of people in this position did not make the same decision and so shout out to washington for being a real one and for choosing democracy over autocracy you have to serve you could continue to serve no one last time the people will hear from me one last time. And if we get this right, we're going to teach them how to say goodbye. You and I. Mr. President, they will say your way. No, they will see we're strong. This is so you So I'll use it to move them along. I say goodbye, then 
face and learns to move on It outlives me when I'm gone Like the scripture says Everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree And no one shall make them afraid They'll be safe in the nation we've made Okay, one, I don't know that scripture. My mom don't quote that scripture to me, so I don't know it. <laughs> uh, two, um, my boy sing it. Okay, I like, I, I like the vocals he be giving, okay? I, I find it interesting that certain characters in this musical primarily rap, and there are certain characters in this musical that primarily sing, but George Washington is one of the, the, the few characters in this who I feel like he does like a, a pretty decent level of both, although it's been a little while since, since he rapped. But whatever, the point is George Washington, his actor can also sing as well. Is his name Chris? I feel like his name is Chris without an H. Is that right? I don't know. It's the people, I keep asking for actors' names and the people give me like a, a rundown of all of the actors' names and I'll, I'll still forget. Sorry guys. But this, this man, he can sing very well. Three, it never dawned on me that he is so right. Choosing to step down while he was still alive and letting someone else take the mantle of leadership again while he's still alive allows the nation to not be so shocked by his death that it crumbles when he died it's not a this is going to be a weird situation because i'm about to compare it to something that's not a democracy but it's not a Mongol empire where when Genghis Khan died, his empire fractioned under his children because it was it was all built under this man. Uh, not all of it, but he it went from basically nothing to one of the largest empires the world has ever seen in his lifetime. And so the entire empire was kind of built around him. And once he was gone, the empire didn't really know how to continue forward without him at the helm. Same thing with Alexander the Great's empire, which was, again, it preceded him. His dad already had a huge empire when he took over. But when he took over, it expanded to uh, this massive historic thing to the point where a lot of other great men have been named Alexander. But when he died, because he left no heir, which technically he left his heir to like the greatest among you or something. It was like some very blatant call for like everyone who was ambitious in the empire to fight for the throne, which is insane. But the point is that his empire didn't know how to continue forward without him when he died. And so because Washington chose to step down instead of just ruling until he died, this new country had the opportunity to learn to function without his leadership while he was still there, especially because they were like using democracy. So they got to vote on who the next person was. Does that make sense? I, I, that never clicked for me in my life until right now. I just thought bro got tired of like all of the responsibility or something. I don't know. I don't know what was going through George Washington's head when it happened. I wasn't there, but this framing of it is so it's paradigm shifting for me so um shout out to lynn for that i don't know if that was like actually the thought process historians have said was george washington's thought process when he stepped down i don't know what it was but i find it fascinating that that is is true a lot of situations like this where the leader dies the empire fractures under the differing people who are vying for power because it's such a immediate and also jolting experience. So I just, yeah, that's cool. I think that's what he was trying to say there in his, uh, it will outlive me, uh, the nation will learn to not need me. I don't know, I don't know what he said, okay, I just saw it, but you get the point. I think that was the vibe he was going for. That's what I got from it, at least. You'll be safe in the nation we've made. I want to sit under my own vine and fig tree A moment alone in the shade At home, in this nation we've made For the last time One last time mm. Ooh, That's powerful, bro. Though, in reviewing the incidents of my administration, I am unconscious of intentional error, I am nevertheless too sensible of my defects not to think it probable that I may have committed many errors. I shall also carry with me the hope that my country will view them with indulgence, and that after 45 years of my life, 
dedicated to its service. Is this um his? You know what I'm trying to say. Is is this the thing that Hamilton wrote for for Washington? Because this it's not rhyming anymore. That's why I it it feels like a speech almost. And so if it's not, that's what it feels like. <laughs> and that after 45 years of my life dedicated to its service with an upright zeal, the faults of incompetent abilities will be consigned to oblivion. As I myself must soon be to the mansions of the rest. I anticipate with pleasing expectation that retreat in which I promised myself to realize the sweet enjoyment of partaking in the midst of my fellow citizens the benign influence of good laws under a free government the ever favorite object of my heart and the happy reward as I trust Okay, again, back to back, little references real quick. We got the George Washington's coming home, which is a reference to Thomas Jefferson's coming home from What Did I Miss? And then we got uh, History Has Its Eyes On You, which is like, this is literally, it's a whole song. You know the song, okay? So did, did, do they reference every single, no, no, they don't. I was gonna say, do they reference every single song that Washington is in, in this song? This feels like his, his last, moment and bro going ham bro he's like okay if this is the last i don't know if he gets dual cast and something else on this but he's like if this is the last washington moment i'm getting i'm going in and um yeah that was really yeah it was that was really cool with the the thing where uh alexander was writing or reading whatever hamilton's words and then it like turned into hamilton's kind of like in movies where you you'll see somebody like open a letter and they're reading it and then it like transitions into the person who wrote wrote its voice, but it it's in musical form. And so I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I like it. It's cool. Oh wow. Wow. This is yeah. This is this is yeah. Whoa. This this is a this yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are, those aren't words, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, we're gonna teach you how to say goodbye. Teach to me how to say goodbye. To say goodbye. Say goodbye one last time. Dang, bro, about to, what, he, what, who, oh, he about to make me, about to make me feel something, okay, he, what, why, why is he crying like that, like, we, why, we, bro, you, uh, whew, wow, he got, wow, okay, wow, that was crazy, that was, that was fire, that's, that's, we're going to the outro, yeah, that's, that, that's all the songs I'm supposed to do in this part, so, um, whoo, Woo doggy. That was that was crazy. Um Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, that that was incredible. Hamilton makes me feel makes me feel like I I I needed I needed to take that pregnant pause there because that part of the sentence is also it it just it makes sense on its own. But Hamilton makes me feel like I wish I had a larger vocabulary of adjectives to describe how great this is. I don't know that I have experienced something like this 
in my life. It's insane how much stuff is packed into this, how many great performances and songs. I've, I've gotten a lot of people asking me like, hey, who's your favorite performer in this? What's your favorite songs? What's your three favorite songs? What's your five favorite songs? Like, I, I, I don't, first off, I'm not even done yet, so it's way too premature to ask me that stuff. But I, I don't know that I will be able to pick at the end of this because like, I'm floored consistently by how consistently exceptional this is. And and the craziest part about it is the things that impress me in one song are not at all the things that will impress me in the next song. And so I love that. There's like so, so much here. It feels like a buffet of really interesting things narratively and story-wise, lyrically and, and rhyme scheme-wise, metaphor-wise, musically, performance-wise, acting and 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 vocals and i just yeah i don't know how long this video is going to be and i'm not going to make this outro super long because i'm i'm afraid of looking at how i didn't even look at how long the uncut footage is before i hit the outro because i i knew i wouldn't say anything i'd just be like bye because <laughs> uh i'm sure this video is super long but i yeah it's astounding to me that 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 they did this, you know, that this is that this is a thing that was created about a topic that I find so incredibly boring, like so uninteresting. It's not even funny. As I've kind of demonstrated in these series of videos, I keep saying I don't like really know his I do know some history. I referenced like five different empires in this video, but no offense. American history and like this part of American history is super boring to me. And the fact that they have me this engaged and this emotional and this uh, in awe of something that I basically my whole life have been very uninterested in is so incredible to me. This sounds like, it sounds like me talking about Hamilton in whole, like this is the last part. I know it's not, I know that there's like more songs to go, but like hearing like the one last time thing and like the, the, the dude getting emotional and like whatever, it's just, I don't know. It just kind of hit me like how incredible it is to experience this. I feel like grateful to like have been alive when this was created. That sounds like I'm riding the mess out of Lynn right now, but it, it's the truth. Like it, this is like so, this is so wow. It's so wow. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna shut up now. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. All of those songs were incredible. There's four songs in this, right? And so the, the, the first like few songs, I feel like blended together a little bit, but it was, it was, it was great. It was great. Start to finish for a bunch of different reasons. So thank you for being here while I experience this, while I process all of all of this that's being thrown at me. I am so glad I'm not you guys who had to like, take all of this in at one time. It, it would have been super overwhelming for me. I would have been like very overstimulated. So thank you guys who helped me break this up into the parts that I've been doing it in. And thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you have watched until this point, thank you so, so much. The emoji for this video is, we're going back to Lions because you know, uh, but um, another lion emoji in the chat, in the comments, if you have watched until this point, because I really do appreciate it. And I would like to thank you personally. Uh, also, if you watch until this point, please do subscribe, like, share, comment, the whole gambit, all of the different aspects that YouTubers tell you to do, because it really does help the video. It helps the channel a lot. Uh, the algorithm basically doesn't care about us at all. They only care about what you guys do about the videos. So please do all of those things because it does help the video, it helps the channel immensely. And they're all free. Like literally every single one of them are free unless you're on Patreon, because you know, that's its own separate thing. But thank you guys so much on Patreon as well. I love you guys as well. And I tell you guys that all the time, but yeah, it does mean a lot. So definitely do all the, hit all the little, the little things you can hit, comment all the things that you can comment and share the video so YouTube doesn't bear it. And I will be seeing all of you guys here on the channel next time for part whatever. I don't even know what part we are, we're on, which is why I didn't say it in this video. But uh, whatever this is, plus one. I'll see you guys then. So you guys have a great day. Peace. These guys no blues. A new love, but we know that it accrues. Like time in a QS shampoo, new bamboo. Much more of it will ensue. I'm caught in this trance in the of sinking down in the stew. You change up the brew, now life tastes so brand new. 
It's delicious like fondue Under the moonlight tonight Stars and hearts shimmering Shimmering Illuminate who I am You're a bad light You are I'm nice